In this tutorial, we will discuss how to construct a means and standard deviations table and a word table in APA style. Before creating the table, you must give some thought to what elements are going to be included. This will help you determine how many columns and rows the table will include. Although it is relatively easy to add columns and rows later, it is still a good idea to have a rough estimate of how many of each you will need. Let's start with the means and standard deviations table. Our example involves a table presenting the means and standard deviations for a two-group pre-test, post-test design. First, create a table heading and title. The heading should be the word table, capitalized, and the number of the table, flush left. Skip a line, and then type the title of the table in title case with italic letters. The font should be the same as the font of your text, preferably Times New Roman 12-point font. Try to make the title succinct. In our example, our table is Table 1, Pre-Test and Post-Test Means and Standard Deviations for Treatment and Control Groups. Next, insert a table using the Insert menu in Word. Click on the table icon, and then highlight the number of columns and rows that you'll need. We'll start with a 7 by 8 table, 7 columns, 8 rows. The column header indicates what each column represents. In this case, the first column header is variable, as we have three outcome variables that we are reporting descriptive statistics for. Note that we are starting the heading on the second row. The reason for this will become clear momentarily. We indicate each variable's name, skipping a line between each because we have data for two groups. Our variables are the DRA, the PAPI, and a closed test. The next column header is Group, as we are presenting the descriptive statistics for our two groups separately. It's important to include the group size or sample size somewhere in the table. This can be done as a separate column, especially if the sample size on which the analyses are based varies from analysis to analysis due to incomplete data. It can also be done in the title if the sample or group size, known as N, is consistent for all analyses. The next columns are for pre-test and post-test means and standard deviations. We give each a separate column. However, we need to designate these as pre-test or post-test. Therefore, above the first mean and standard deviation, we write pre or pre-test, and above the second, we write post or post-test. In order to make the table look tidy, we can merge the two cells above M and SD and center them so that the words pre-test or post-test are centered above their respective columns. To do this, select the cells, right-click, and then click Merge Cells. We can also center the letters N, M, and SD and italicize them. Now we're ready to enter information for each group. Let's label the cells under the column group as Treatment and Control for each variable. And for clarity's sake, we can double space after each pair of rows, thereby separating the variables somewhat. Under the N column, we've indicated how many people the analysis was based on. For example, let's assume there were a few missing data points. Although 10 people were in the treatment group and 10 in the control group, only 9 and 8 completed the DRA. For the mean and standard deviations columns, we'll enter the means and standard deviations to two decimal places at most. Before entering the descriptive statistics, it's helpful to set some tabs so that all of the decimal points will be aligned. To do this, begin in a cell. Point the cursor in the ruler area in the top of the page at a point that corresponds to where you want to set a tab, preferably the center of the column. If the ruler is not shown, you can find it under the View menu. Check the ruler box and it will appear. When you've positioned your cur cursor, double click to set a tab. Then we must change the tab so that it is a decimal tab. Click the box next to decimal, then set and OK. You'll now see a tab with a decimal place in that cell. However, if you go to another cell in the column, you will notice that the tab does not appear. Therefore, you must highlight all of the cells and click on that decimal tab. 
Now it's set for all of the cells in that column. Note that if a tab is not quite as centered as you'd like, you can drag it left or right by left-clicking, holding, and moving it. You'll need to reset the position of the tab for the other cells in that column using the shortcut. The final step is to make the borders consistent with APA style. Begin by selecting the table. If you move the cursor anywhere within the table, You'll note that a small box with a cross in it appears at the top left corner of the table. Left click this box and then right click and select borders and shading. The top border will already be selected as will all of the other borders. However, we want to remove everything but the top border and the bottom border. Now we want to select the cells that contain the column headings, variable, group, n, m, sd, etc. Select these cells, then right click and select borders and shading. The top border again does not need to be clicked, but the bottom border needs to be added. Finally, Select these two cells, pre-test and post-test. Right click, select borders and shading, and just add the bottom border. We can add some data. and our table is consistent with APA style. Moving along to a word table, the word table uses the same format. However, the content is entirely text-based. For example, let's say that you're doing a qualitative study and want to include a table of the major themes identified from the data, along with a sample quote and the subject taught by the teacher from whom this quote was obtained. The focus of the study is the experience of new teachers in an inner city high school that serves high risk students. The columns would be theme, subject, and quotation, and the rows would be individual examples of each. Thus, if you had five themes with two sample quotes per theme, you would create a three column by 11 row table. Note that you can use the insert menu, select insert table, and then specify how many columns and rows you want to include. Be sure to label the table, for example, Table 2, Sample Quotations for Major Themes. Then label the column headings and the rows and fill in the data. Finally, adjust the borders to match APA style. By selecting the table, right-clicking, selecting borders and shading, removing everything but the top and the bottom border, and then finally, putting a bottom border underneath the column headings. The table is now APA style consistent.